good, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Dave, Big Dave here, Dave TV for the 7th of February, 2011. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Um, uh, nice day today. <laughs> uh, good weather. You know, my birthday is the 8th, which is tomorrow. I'm not, I'm 39 again, I'll just say that, but, uh, you know, usually there's about a 50% chance of some really rotten weather on my birthday. Uh, usually it's snow or ice or whatever. Uh, and it's a beautiful day today. Temperature's in the 50s, nice and sunny. And there's a chance I guess of some wet snow flurries tomorrow. But what the heck, you know, it doesn't look like anything bad. In fact, we've had a very mild winter here in the Washington area. Uh, what's the big news today? Well, the big news is I'm hearing a lot of rumblings that uh, CBS Radio is looking for some Northern Virginia signals. Now, I don't know why I have the camera point down so far, so I have to clean <laughs> that. I did. Oh, there we go. Hi. Can you see me now? Can you, can you hear me now? Uh, uh, the rumblings are that uh, CBS is looking for some Northern Virginia signals. Now, both 99.1, the new WNEW, the all-newser, and uh, El Zal, uh, 1079, you know, they could use better signals in Northern Virginia, especially El Zol, I think. You know, um, moving El Zol from 99.1 to 107.9 on December 1st, I think really hurt the station in terms of the ratings. You know, there's a lot of Hispanic population in Northern Virginia, especially down in Prince William County and stuff like that. And 107.9 signal doesn't make it down there that well. It's listenable. You can hear it on the car radio when I'm driving around here in Western Fairfax County, but, uh, you know, it's not a strong signal. And 901 wasn't really a strong signal, but it certainly was a lot easier to hear than 1079. The other problem that 1079 has is that it's up against 1077, which has a transmitter in the Warrington area, and that's the WTOP relay for Virginia all the way down to Fredericksburg and Charlottesville. So, uh, you know, you're running up against that. So problematic. Um, so my sources are telling me that they're hearing rumblings that CBS is looking for uh, additional transmission facilities in Northern Virginia. I don't know what they're going to find. There's obviously some AMers they could probably snatch up. Uh, you know, an AMer might be good for Elzol, you know, because Hispanic people, Latinos in the Washington area are used to listening to AM radio around here. You know, other than Elzol, if you want to listen to AM radio in Washington, there's a lot of Hispanic stations, you know, from that Viva 900 there in Laurel, to, you know, the 1460 in Manassas. There's, you know, all up and down the dial, there's just, you know, Spanish stations and other ethnic stations. And so those folks that are into that are more used to listening to AM. So I think an AM relay in Northern Virginia would better benefit El Zal, you know, because just because I think those, you know, listeners are more likely to listen to AM. I don't see how an AM relay in Northern Virginia, especially in a daytime or something like that would benefit at WNEW much. If WNEW is looking for an additional signal in Northern Virginia, I really would say they would have to go for an FM signal. You know, now maybe they could pick up 94.3 in Warrington, which is currently owned by Dan Snyder and is a relay for, for uh, WTEM, ESPN 980, but I can't see Snyder selling that. I mean, it's, you know, it gives some good coverage into Central Virginia, especially for the Redskins. And I don't see a lot of FM signals available in Northern Virginia that uh, that uh, CBS could pick up. You know, uh, you know, I've always said hey, maybe 92.5, you know, out of uh, out of uh, Winchester, you know, from Centennial. But you know, that would be a that would probably be a good pickup for for WNEW CBS. But I don't see it happening. I don't know. You never know. Uh, as I said, you know, CBS could always use WJFK's 106.7 for WNEW and move. But that would mean moving WJFK somewhere else, and that would mean, you know, doing something different with Fresh, or, you know, it would, it would bollocks up their signal. So CBS, you know, they're doing pretty well. The ratings for, for Fresh, 94.7 have gone up. The ratings for PGC without Big Tigger have gone up. Uh, the, the other stations are problematic. You know, it's going to, we still haven't seen the, the first ratings for WNEW. I can't imagine, though, they're going to be stellar. Um, w, El Zal has been doing slumpy ratings since moving to 107.9, and, uh, JFK, again, the station's hobbling along. Uh, 20th place, 19th place. I don't know, man. Somebody needs to fix that station. It's got some big problems. All right, folks, that is the big rumor du jour. <laughs> so will we hear soon about CBS buying some signals in Northern Virginia? Maybe. 
You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll pick up something like uh, eleven thirty over there by excuse me eleven ninety by Dallas Airport. Then that WCRW, which is currently Chinese English radio. Hey, <laughs> uh, the other day, the other day, I opened up a box that had a bunch of cool uh, memorabilia from my good friend Rob over there in Maryland. Whole bunch of cool stuff. We went through that. That was uh, the Dave TV over the weekend for Saturday or Sunday. And uh, Rob had put a couple pieces of cardboard on the top, okay, of the package. And I thought they were just packaging. But later when Rob watched the video that I did over the weekend, Rob said, hey, Dave, there was stuff inside the pieces of cardboard. So uh, luckily I hadn't thrown the box away and I ran down, ripped open the pieces of cardboard. And sure enough, there was a – look at this. This was what was in there. <laughs> look at that. Who is that? That is Donnie Simpson. Uh, there's no date on this. <laughs> but that's got to be 70s. Look at him. Donnie Simpson there from circa, uh, maybe this was a, you know, remember a Disco 939? I don't know if Donnie worked at KYS back before, you know, that might have been, you know, back in their Disco 9390s because Donnie came here from Detroit and worked at KYS for many years, but uh, that's probably his KYS days there. And that's Donnie. All right, folks. And we also, uh, also, can, also from the package was this uh, Jim and Doreen uh, uh, Washington Post magazine article from uh, 1990. And you know, staying power. They're still the top anchor team in Washington. Uh, some gosh, 21 years late, 22 years later. You know. Uh, Oh, it's funny, Jim. Now, Jim looks a bit older. You know, he's got the gray hair and all that. But gosh, Doreen, you know, she actually maybe actually looks a little younger these days <laughs> due to the miracle of wigs and makeup and whatever. And also, there were some cool things, a couple more of these. I, yeah, Rob had sent me a few of these before. Uh, the Washington the Washington, Ta Washington Stars Sunday TV magazine, a funny little magazine here with some articles. Uh, we got uh, Elizabeth Montgomery there. Do you know, I never told this story on here before. My dad knew Elizabeth Montgomery as a kid. Um, my my dad grew up in Hartsdale, New York, just north of New York City. And his dad, my grandfather, Horace, uh, worked in Manhattan and knew a lot of people in the TV business. My granddad was kind of a PR guy in the, you know, in, in doing a lot of, uh, wrote a lot of medical journals and stuff like that. But got into the PR circles in New York and... Uh, he knew Robert Montgomery. Robert Montgomery, of course, is a great classic movie actor uh, from the 40s and 50s. You know, a lot of cool movies with Robert Montgomery if you watch TCM. Well, Robert was Elizabeth's dad. And uh, there, were, there were times when uh, Robert Montgomery would uh, bring a little Elizabeth over and play with my dad. So there. So there's a connection. <laughs> so there's Elizabeth Montgomery, of probably the greatest known for Bewitched. Uh, and then we've got, uh, yeah, look at this. So there's uh, the, TV, the Washington Star TV magazine with Don Adams. Would you believe? I was a huge fan of Get Smart when I was a kid. I don't think they've held up as well. You know, I did. I have bought some uh, Get Smart retrospective uh, DVD collections, and I don't know, they're just not as funny anymore. And then we've got uh, the late great. Anne Francis, didn't I read that she recently passed away? One of my one of my favorite science fiction movies, Forbidden Planet. And uh, there we go. Who's that? Nipsey Russell. Yeah, I remember him from all the game shows he used to do back in the back in the seventies uh, and eighties. All right, folks. There we go. Okay, so that's the big news. Um, Listening to WMAL's morning show. Again, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I don't know why Brian Williams does... Brian Williams. Brian Wilson does so many ads, man. It's just the whole show is Brian Wilson shilling this, shilling that, shilling this, shilling that. Or with Mary Catherine Hamm and Brian Wilson shilling this, shilling that, shilling this. And Chris Plant shilling that. And Brian Neiman shilling that. And then Brian Wilson and, and Mary Catherine Hamm shilling more stuff. It's just... I don't know, man. Uh, hmm... Ponderous, man. Ponderous. WMAO, I just did the ratings for uh, the second week of January. 17th place. And that's with FM. 
Man, somebody's some. There are a couple stations that really need to be shaken up, shaken, not stirred. And WMAL is one of them, and WJFK is another. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, that's the big news for today. That's Dave TV for today, seventh uh, of February, two thousand eleven, twelve, two thousand twelve. One day, probably by July. By July, I'll start getting the year right. I, I'll start to say it's July fourth, two thousand and twelve. Thanks for watching, and so there.